Good morning, everyone. Melissa here from Simple Farmhouse Family. Today, we're going to continue our series on diving deep into my pantry, and we're going to talk all things protein, meats, beans, um, on, I, hopefully that'll be able to do this on one video. If not, we'll separate the two and I'm going to show you what I store and how I use some of it. And hopefully you will start storing some of this for your household. Um, thanks again for watching and subscribing and liking this video. It does help me move up in the algorithm on YouTube. So uh, I really appreciate it. And let's get started. All right. If you haven't watched my one year pantry, I do store, um, in this room, about a year's worth of food. I did open the window so you would have a little bit more light than usual. So this is just a quick overview. If you haven't watched that video, please do. Um, it kind of gives you an overview of all this stuff. But today we're gonna dig deep in my proteins and we're gonna start with the meat section. If you're a vegetarian, this video, um, probably about halfway through we'll do the beans, might come in more for what you need to store, but let's get started. I kind of, I keep it all on this shelf here um, in big quantities, but I don't know if you've noticed with my other series, I'm just pulling it out and putting it on a shelf so you can see each item. So let's start with, um, kind of my beef section of things you can buy from Costco or Walmart. I buy this from Costco. Um, I think I've seen it in the store, but because we live so far from Costco, um, a lot of things I have shipped to my house that they will do. I don't think you can have it shipped to your house anymore. They've really lessened, maybe because of supply chain issues, what you can have shipped to your house on uh, two-day shipping. But at one time, this was $9.99. Last time I bought was $11.99. And I don't even know if you can find it either in-store or online. I would have to look. Um, so shredded beef, and it's just in a um, foil pouch. Uh, but stores um, really well. And this is really good, obviously, in burritos. I put it um, on potatoes. With um, if you ever had barbecue potatoes, you make whole potatoes in the oven, um, butter, some of this barbecue sauce, sour cream, veggies, super good. But um, very easy. This is a very large portion. This is actually three pounds of meat, so a very good deal at that price. I don't know if it's still there, but if it is, I would pick it up. Uh, Costco again, one of the biggest places I buy my bulk food. Kirkland is their brand. Bacon crumbles. They are real bacon. Nice quantity for a good price. This is 1.25 pounds. And again, because I stock yearly and I know prices, this was $9.99, at least in 2020. And now I'm seeing it at, um, at the height I saw at $11.99. I think it's came back to $10.99. So prices are definitely going up. And because I keep track, I see it. <laughs> um, now we're going to roast beef. These things I get from Walmart. Uh, well, actually roast beef I bought from Costco and chicken right here. You can buy these at Costco for a while. Both were out of stock. So again, you know, in, in our area, you do see supply chain issues. You don't see everything gone. It's not that dire, but we do think see things like this for months and months was not in stock. So then I started looking at Walmart and you can find this at Walmart. It's more pricey. And then their canned chicken is back. And so these come in a pack of eight. I think it's $14.99 and these come in a pack of, I think it's only six of these. So either look at if you shop at Costco, otherwise check Walmart for, you know, an alternative that's very similar. And these are 12 and a half ounce cans, 12 and 12 and a half. Next, this is great value. That's a Walmart brand pulled pork. Can't get pulled pork in these at Costco. So I just thought to change it up. I would get some of these. I don't have a whole lot of the pulled pork. Uh, maybe eight or ten, but you'll see why here in a few minutes. Next, corned beef hash, uh, cost or Walmart. Uh, this one, you can get this kind of corn. You can get corned beef hash at Walmart. You can get corned beef at Costco. This kind. Um, this is actually pretty good to try to use it as an alternative to, you know, corned beef and cabbage. If you make that at your house a couple times a year, um, you actually can use this, and it's super fast. All you got to do is. Um, saute, get, you know, with some water, cover it, um, you get your cabbage cooked down, throw some of this in so fast for corned beef and cabbage and a pretty good alternative to actually having to buy a whole corned beef, better price for sure too. But obviously if you're a big family like me, you probably need a couple cans. Um, pepperoni, 
I believe that I got this at Costco, but it might have been Walmart. I can't remember if Costco always has um, pepperoni. But what's nice about it, it's shelf stable until you open it. People often think pepperoni has to be in the fridge. It actually can be shelf stable until you open the package. And then these are Costco things. <laughs> these ones, I would say to you, you have to like them to get them. Spam Vienna sausages are not my go-to. I actually kind of questioned if I should get spam because spam is just a couple times a year that we would naturally go for it and fry it up. I know some people love it. it it's not my favorite. It's much better if you do um, buy it to cut it and kind of um, pan fry it before you eat it. And it's doable, but I really got it because at the time I didn't have a huge stock up of meat. And these are what were available. And um, my kids do like Vienna sausages if I think to pull them out. I don't all the time. You know, so if you have enough of other things, I don't know that I will keep a high stock. I would rather keep more of some of these just meats, not mixed meats, like beef, chicken, roast beef, pulled pork, bacon crumbles over spam and Vienna sausages. But again, we don't waste food here. You shouldn't either. If you buy it, you know, learn to cook with it a couple meals, get it gone. And then you don't have to restock what you don't love. But again, I still cook with fresh chicken and fresh beef um, and hamburger. If I never could do that again, I don't know, maybe a variety of these things would be good. Um, so then we're going to move over here to Whirlings is a company you can buy online from. Um, meat from, I think it's, um, are they in Wisconsin or Ohio? Um, and they will ship either six to 12 cans. They are not cheap. Uh, I would not say they're cheap at all, but with the prices nowadays, I don't, they're super easy. So if you open up this beef or this taco beef filling, you literally can have a meal, make some tortillas up, um, rice, some gravy, and you've got you know, endless possibilities. And it, it, it's pretty good meat. Uh, we do, we don't mind it at all. Um, but, but it's not the cheapest. So we don't, these aren't a go-to all the time at all. So you can get beef, taco beef filling, hamburger in the beef section, and then you can get pork and pork sausage. This is good to make into, um, like a gravy, biscuits and gravy, hash browns and gravy in the morning. Obviously anything you put pork in soups. It is better to pan fry it with the pork sausage before you put it into whatever else you're gonna make. So if you're gonna make gravy, I would pan fry, kind of cook it up like you would hamburger just very shortly because it's already fully cooked, but it does give it a better flavor and then add your gravy. And then you can get turkey and chicken from them as well. So that's their line. Um, I would first say, if you're just getting started, go with some of these um, cheaper options before stocking up with Whirlings because it's you're gonna get more for your money on some of these items. And then if you have a nice stock up and you know you just want a little bit more variety and kind of some uh, foods that are uh, specialty or a little bit more pricey, but variety, then you can go and order these. Or obviously if money's not an issue for you, these are, are good to have on hand, but we definitely kind of limit how much we use them because it's actually cheaper to you know, buy pork or beef at the store, hamburger, and cook it up. And then some of the other things in protein that you don't want to forget is peanut butter is high in protein. It actually has eight, I believe. Let's look here. Yes, eight grams of protein in it. Also high fat, of course. Costco, you get two of these for $10, at least the last time I looked in my area. And then this does not have as long of shelf life as... Um, some of your other canned foods. So make sure you don't overstock peanut butter. Peanut butter has, um, you probably don't don't want to go over a year for sure on peanut butter. And then Nutella, um, almost more like a sugar or a topping for your bread or toast sandwiches. Um, but it, it's a nice sweet treat. We, we store some of these kind of as a luxury more than, um, you know, it's a survival food. It's definitely not that. Um, although anything you have is, has calorie dense, it's a survival food, but it's not one that you have to store for people who are vegetarian. There are alternatives that you can get. You can get chicken, textured vegetable protein. We also have beef in my long-term storage and then also black bean burgers. These are actually quite tasty. Um, obviously you can see we're not vegetarians. I personally don't mind. I can eat lots of my food vegetarian and don't have to have meat in it. My husband is definitely um, a meat and potatoes kind of guy. 
So, and a lot of my kids are as well. So there are your basic meat proteins, meat alternatives you can get. Um, start taking notes. There's a lot more variety than people think out there. When you think canned meat, you kind of think, uh, you know, there's not a lot of options. There really is. And the final one I forgot to actually show you is our, um, what is, you know, like your uh, fish and seafood. <laughs> so you can get sardines at Costco. It's a six pack, I believe might be eight. Um, not a huge fan, but I, you can make a really good, um, spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce with sardines, really good. And then we store tuna, albacore, and just the basic chunk light tuna. In water is what they sell at Costco. I hear it lasts longer in oil, but I haven't had a problem with tuna going bad in a can. And so I just get it where I can get it for very convenient and we go through it. And then they don't sell these to crab meat and tiny shrimp at Costco. So these I get at Walmart. Again, I don't cook with these very much. It's kind of just at the holidays if I want to make an appetizer with, you know, crab meat or shrimp. There's some of those. Um, and then finally, this you get at Costco. Pink salmon. Really good quality salmon. Um, you can make salmon patties. Put salmon over rice. A good, a good find. A little bit more pricey, just like salmon is. So, you know, obviously you want to store more tuna, practically. But to have, you know, salmon on hand for more, you know, to spice it up and to have some nicer meals and to have that kind of fish in, you know, your rotation is a good option. All right. Then we're going to swing over here to, there's, you know, your vegetarian options. And then beans are your other um, protein. I didn't take any of those off the shelf. Um, so, but I think that they're close enough to the light. I can actually just talk to you about beans. Um I store lots of long-term beans out in my long-term storage. I will get to that, but um, you want to store beans and lentils in bulk. Huge protein and a very cheap protein, way cheaper than meat. And you can use meat as an accent in your dishes with rice and beans. Um, and if you're trying to make it spread, you literally can just use one can of turkey if you have rice and beans or one can of hamburger for even a large family like mine if you're trying to make it spread. So definitely do things like garbanzo beans. This is lentils. I have a couple different colors, uh, red, green, and brown lentils, black beans. Those are poppy seeds. I have a mixed blend. And then I have, um, in huge quantities, I have pinto, great Northern and black beans. Um, I might have red beans in a pretty big supply as well. So you're not seeing those up here, but you definitely want to stock your beans. Make note of dry beans are a big prepper, you know, stock up. <laughs> you want to go high with that. Next, we have some chilies um, from Costco. Again, you can get Nally's and Cattle Drive, at least at my local Costco um, in big packs. I need to refill my Nally's is what my kids really like. I actually like the Cattle Drive. My husband doesn't carry their way over rice. Super easy, fast meal. You can also mix it in with macaroni and cheese. Cheap, fast meal. Um, you can't get the Hormel chicken chili um, at Costco, but you can get it at Walmart. Um, so we have less of that because the price point is higher than these chilies. So not as many of those. And then next we have just pinto beans. I don't have a huge stock of, of canned pinto beans just because I have so many in dry beans. So, um, but I do like to have easy, fast refried beans. I buy these from Costco, as you can see. Actually, these ones I got at this brand, um, Good and Gather is from Target. And they were a good price. They were about the same price as the Costco Rosarita. I don't think we're real picky on our refried beans. So we have some more just for when we do a quick Mexican meal and just want to grab them out and have them because it takes a lot more forethought to, you know, um, cook beans from scratch or pinto beans, but way better tasting. So, you know, you want to have okay, So that's my first section of beans. So just remember when you see these beans, I have tons of dry beans as well. So this is not, beans are a staple. You gotta have them unless you really hate beans or you can't tolerate them. But I, I definitely think they are a go-to. And then lots of baked beans, good in the summer. That's mainly when we use them or beans and wieners. Um, but I've also used them in chilies. You can, but it's cheaper actually to buy pinto beans, you know, kidney beans and make a chili. Um, but these actually add a nice flavor. You can make a chili out of that as well. But for the most part, we just use them for when we barbecue and beans and wieners. 
but my kids love them. Ranch beans, really good for some um, bean dishes that I do, like um, I think they're called seven layer bean dish. This is what you can use for that. You can make them with chili. You know what to do with beans. I'm not trying to tell you guys. I'm just giving you some options and ones you might have forgot. Um, so red kidney beans down here, hominy, golden and white, more black beans. So you got red beans, you got pink beans and you got black beans. We also have great Northern chickpeas make a great hummus. And then also they're becoming really popular to, um, freeze dry and they're kind of a crunchy snack. So if you have a freeze dryer, try that and black eyed peas. And then down here, just some extra stock up, as you can see, of beans. So that is my bean section. Um, really good protein and really way to expand your food stores for a reasonable price. These are convenience, obviously, having them in cans, because beans store really long, dried, very long. So I, I think it's just nice to have a variety. Get your cans, have them so that if you need a fast meal, they're there, but definitely stock in bigger quantities, your bulk dry beans. Okay, let's see if the light is kind of bad. There we go. Um, so that's it for the proteins. We need to talk about fats um, to get that fat in your diet. We need to talk about spices and condiments, all of that in the next video. And then of course, let's not forget all your drinks and your carbohydrates. So we've got a couple more in the series, but hopefully this helps you, gives you ideas, make a list, start, you know, don't just buy all your, although I tell you not to do this, but depending on your money, for me and the way my mind works, I actually did, as I, I've been doing this for years, probably at least five years that I've had a one year food pantry. So I'm not new to this, but when I did it, the way my brain works is I do actually do a section and I stock up. And when I have a good supply of that, then I move to the next section. So obviously having more variety in case you have to stop all of a sudden is, is the smarter way to go, but it's kind of overwhelming. So if you're like me and you feel like you're not feeling rushed to do this, um, I do su suggest like taking a section of your pantry, wherever you're putting food and saying, looking at just one section, look at your vegetables and say, do I have enough for whatever the time frame? Maybe you're not doing a year, maybe you're doing a month or three months. And then, um, Make sure you've checked off all the boxes, the variety that you want or your your meats. And once that section is to the level you want it to be, then the next paycheck or the next time you have some money, do your fruits and then your proteins, your fats. So, so I tell you not that you can do a variety to stock up, but um, it's harder to keep track and make sure that you're organized versus if you really just look at a section. So like now when I restock, because we've been doing this for such a long time, I don't come in here and I can't replenish everything all the time. And so I will, if I'm making a Costco run and I know I might have an extra hundred dollars to spend, I will just pick a section. I'll look at my condiment section like this and I'll say, okay, I, I'm going to have a little bit of extra money. Make note that I need a few more salts and pepper and I need a ranch and I need, you know, a couple more ketchups and mustard, you know, and cream soups. And so I'll just take a section and replenish when I have a certain amount of money. But then you have, um, it's so organized that nothing goes bad. You know exactly how much you have of each thing. And it just makes it a lot um, easier to keep track of. So I definitely not putting down anybody's pantry. If you have a pantry, if you have a one year food pantry, you're doing awesome. But if you organize it in sections by um, categories, you can keep track of what you have and you tend to rotate it a little bit better when it's well organized. So, okay, for today, that was your proteins. Make sure you store proteins, even if you're a vegetarian, um, really stock up on your beans and your um, alternative, you know, meat sources. Or if you uh, eat meat like our family, definitely start stocking because that was an area, one of the last areas I did was meat, was serious lacking because it is also a pricier section to do. Um, but oh, one more thing you should not forget. Let's go over here. Here we are. Let's see. Is your broths, your, sorry, I have the camera in a bad way, but you're better than bouillon. You can have, um, this is just chicken bouillon in powder form um, and chicken stock, convenience chicken stock and your convenience 
beef. These need to be refrigerated after you open them, but they're shelf stable until you open them. And these will make a lot of broth beef and chicken from Costco and really cheap, maybe $6.99. So don't forget that when you're doing kind of your meat or beef section, because even if you run out of meat, at least you have some flavoring for soups if you need it. Okay. Once again, there's your video for today. I will try if I have time when I get my kids down for a nap to record the fats, oils, and probably add something else to that um, if I can get some of the stuff out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.